Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be checking out the Windows 11 Developer Preview. That's right, I have Windows 11 natively installed here and I'm going to be giving my first impressions here, just the short overview of things and my thoughts on this new Windows version. We'll get right in by checking out the desktop environment since that's where most of the changes have been made. You'll notice that all icons on the taskbar have been centered. We can see the start menu, a search menu, task view, widgets, the file explorer, Microsoft Edge, Microsoft Store, and of course any current applications running like I have in the background OBS Studio. I've blown things up a little bit so we can see it and if you're new and stopping by make sure to smash that like button. My first impressions here is that things are quite snappy they pop up. I really enjoy the animations. They're doing a great job as far as those go. I don't mind the widgets that they've added. I'm not currently signed into an account, but when that pops up, it gives you some customized information if you're logged in with your Windows account. Overall, I found it very interesting that they chose to center their icons in this Windows 11 version. And the big elephant in the room, changing the name from Windows 10 to Windows 11, they didn't add a letter behind the 10 or anything like that. Supposedly years ago they said they would never be releasing another version, they'd keep it at Windows 10, but I guess this one has strayed far enough away from Windows 10 in order to be called Windows 11. So let's take a little bit of a look at the start menu. It's redesign here, includes applications in the middle that have been pinned, very smooth transitions as you move up and down. If you want to take a look at all apps, you click this button here and then you can see every single app that's currently located on your system in alphabetical order. Again, I'm a big fan of these animations and the rounded corners that you'll be seeing across the board. I'll be going into a more in-depth review of Windows 11 here in the coming days. Again, I wanted to get my first impressions out here, which are relatively great. Let me know what you're thinking in the comment section below. We can get started with the welcome to Windows here in a moment, but we see recommended underneath, which are really recently looked at things. Down at the bottom left, you can see the current user. If you click on that, you can switch users. And then we have our power button, which accesses restart, shutdown, and sleep. If we get started with Windows, we'll see various things you have access to, which we'll just scroll through real quickly. Browse Edge, use Android, you're all set to search, and you can check out tips at the end here. Of course, this is coming soon as they're still currently working on Windows 11 actively. This is not, of course, an official release. We're gonna see that sometime in the fall. This again is the developer release running natively here on some hardware. I'll show you that in a moment. But if you're new and stopping by to watch a video today, make sure to subscribe below for future Linux and operating system videos. Moving on, let's check out the search bar. What's unique about this one is if you just hover over it, it gives you a quick type search. And you can click here to start searching, which brings up the overall search. Kind of interesting. I don't like this because why not just search in here or if I have it highlighted, if I want to just start typing, it should type. It doesn't, at least not currently. OBS Studio was running previously. That's the last application I had running and I opened it up a few times. So it shows us the last three previous running applications. Kind of a quick access here. But if we do click on the magnification icon here, we do get access to a more thorough search where we can look for apps such as Brave, the browser I currently have installed. If I hit escape, that will just close things out completely. We have a couple quick search options here as well. You can check out the markets, translate, get new movies, and look at today in history. Top applications that are being used are display up top. If you want to look through apps, documents, web, and more, you can. It just creates a filter up top for you, so it only focuses on whatever you have selected. Not bad, again, rounded corners. You've noticed them all over the place so far. You can also customize this a little bit better to work for you if you are logged in as a user using a Microsoft account. All right, moving on, we can look at multiple desktops and we can create as many as we need. These are mainly workspaces for us to do different types of work in. If we like grouping things together and not seeing it across the board, we can do that. Once you click again, it will save your workspaces until you exit out and close them down. So what happens if we have two workspaces open with two different things? Let's just start up Brave real quick and then we'll switch back workstations here. Very good, pretty smooth transitions. And if we just highlight over this, we do get a preview of the various different desktops 
or workspaces that we have. Now the widgets view, of course you have to be signed into your Microsoft account, but this gives you widgets much like you would find across the board on Mac OS or Android devices. Microsoft is finally coming into the game with this. I don't mind how they have the widgets. They have a pretty great transition in, in my opinion. Love the animations that they've added to Windows 11. Again, rounded corners, but you'll also notice a transparent and acrylic background on some applications displayed on the desktop. We'll move on to the file browser. Now this one I am pretty excited about. They actually gave some color here, a little bit of pop, and of course rounded out the edges. It looks more elegant in my opinion. We can specify to see the icons in different flavors here. And then on the left hand side, notice the icons with a little bit of color added again. They're doing a pretty great job. They've also condensed most things. So now you can hit a more button in order to get more options and also make things just a little more simplistic to use. Don't overwhelm you with options and ribbons and icons. Instead, it seems like they've given you less options, making it a little easier to use especially for beginners. Right clicking also gives you many more options and we'll get into this again in a later review where we get more in depth. I'll exit out of the file browser, edge here, and then we have the Microsoft Store, which looks very much the same as it did before. Nothing new here, but one thing I'll say is the overall process of going from Windows 10 to 11 was seamless and all my applications are surprisingly working in Windows 11. I haven't had any issues so far and it's been a fairly smooth transition between the two operating systems. Moving on from the store, let's load a app such as GIMP so we can see what we can do with it here at the bottom of the screen. And while GIMP is coming up in the background, if I look on the right hand side, I have more taskbar items if I click the arrow, much like you would before. You get this little icon that tells you whether applications are using your microphone. To the right of that, we can click and have access to various different things such as your connections, which you can actually edit, and your volume and what you're connected to as far as output or input devices go up top media that you can run pause and skip over now that i have gimp open i'm going to highlight it here again the attention to detail in the animations has been great i really do like the animations here if you wanted to pin to the taskbar you can right click and pin to the taskbar now it's a part of the taskbar notice that the icons do move as they are getting added to the taskbar so if we close down gimp and we had it, uh, let's say, unpinned, all of the icons on the taskbar move over to the right. I wonder if you had too many, whether the icons would get smaller. I'll have to try that in the larger overview video I do. And then to the right, if we click, we have the current time and date, followed by various different notifications and a calendar. Again, these look like widgets. I do like how they come in and out of the screen on the right-hand side. Again, I'm a fan of the animations and a fan of Windows 11 so far. If we right-click, you'll notice a redesign in the submenu. You can hit view to change up how your icons look and how the grid is arranged. Sort by is the the typical new item now allows you to create something new on the desktop instead of displaying it all on the one sub menu, which can get a little overwhelming. I like that. Display settings, still access to that as well as personalization. Open up a Windows terminal or show more options. If we click on show more options, we kind of get the old view here, which some people might like using. Very good. But now let's check out settings. If we type settings, you can see system settings, the current user account logged in, and the various different settings we have. We have these rectangular sort of boxes with rounded edges and we can go through the various different system settings like display sound notification and so much more if we go over to bluetooth devices we can add more devices access various things network and internet also gets us access to various different settings Personalization allows us to apply various different themes, which can look pretty good. Let's try one and notice how everything has changed up when it comes to the theme. It took a little bit to load, but in the background, now we have a nice dark theme with an even better background. In my opinion, I like this theme. We'll keep it for now. We'll check more of these out in a future video. So make sure to 
like and subscribe. Moving on, we have various different apps, accounts, time and language, gaming, accessibility, privacy and security, and Windows updates. One thing that's used quite often, at least by me, is the task manager. Again, a little bit of a redesign here. If we open up the processes, it looks very much the same as it did before, just kind of rounded corners here. Let's check out the performance real quick. And notice I have the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X running here. Utilization is around 3% with around 177 processes and around 2600 threads running. Memory has been pretty standard here, about 4.5 gigs out of the 27 available. And when it comes to disk usage, it's barely being used. My GPU is running fairly well with the 3D graphics around 5% and the video encoder running higher because I'm currently recording the screen at around 24%. So overall, I'm quite surprised that what Windows 11 is going to deliver, at least for the front end and the user experience, I think they've made things a little bit cleaner here and definitely the animations are a lot better, smoother. Now this is going to be an interesting move by Windows and Microsoft because they are limiting the type of hardware that will be able to use Windows 11 by limiting it to CPUs that have TPM technology on them. I know I had an issue before I was able to install Windows 11. I had to enable TPM in my BIOS settings. This might push some people off of being able to get to Windows 11. I'm not sure if they're gonna make that a base requirement once everything is said and done and we finally get the official release of Windows 11, but as of now, it is the case that you need TPM enabled. Other than that, I haven't had really many issues. Everything's been working out of the box as soon as I installed things, and all my applications have been running great, no problems there. They also transferred with no problem. I'm actually genuinely surprised of how smoothly that transition went. I was not expecting that, actually quite the opposite. I was figuring that there would be all sorts of issues with this preview edition. But let me know if your experience has been any different. If you've been trying out Windows 11, would love to know. And also be on the lookout for that more in-depth review where we'll go through things more thoroughly here in the future. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.